Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's take a look at the mean free path of a molecule between collisions. In other words, how far does a molecule travel before it collides with another molecule? And uh, it turns out that we have an equation for that. We use the letter lambda, the Greek letter lambda, to indicate mean free path. And here we have an equation in terms of the temperature of the gas, the pressure of the gas, and the diameter of the molecule. And of course, we're going to change that to the radius, makes it a little bit easier to calculate. Or we could simply use distance equals velocity times time. In this case, we're going to use the average velocity of the molecule. Oh, not time. That would be a time between collisions. That's a better way to look at it. So the average velocity of the molecule times the time between collisions. We'll do it both ways, and then you'll see, hopefully, the result comes out to be the same. Now, this is the physics part. Once you have the equation, you know how to apply it, you're done. And so when you prepare for tests or for studying, this is as far as you need to go, and you should have the confidence that you can throw in the numbers and calculate the final result, and that's the algebra part. All right, let's go ahead and do that now to see what result we get. We got lambda is equal to 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23. The temperature is 273 Kelvin, divided by the square root of 2 times pi times 4 times 2 times 10 to the minus 10 squared times 101,325 pascals. And let's see what we get. 1.38 e to the 23 minus times 273 divided by, take the square root of 2, divided by pi, divided by 4, divided by 2e to the 10 minus squared, and divide by 101,325, and it's 5.23 times 10 to the minus 8. So lambda equals 5.23 times 10 to the minus 8 meters. That's the distance traveled by a molecule before it collides with another one, and that's under SDP conditions, and we're talking about oxygen molecules. Now let's do the same over here. And so the distance traveled equals the velocity, which we have over there, times the time between collisions. Now that we calculated in the previous video, that ended up being 1.2 times 10 to the minus 10 seconds. And so the distance is equal to 435 times 1.2 e to the 10 minus equals, and that ended up being 5.22 times 10 to the minus 8. Notice seconds cancel out, so we're left with meters, and the fact that we have meters indicates, at least dimensionally, we have the equation correct. Now, of course, we could have done the same over here. That gets a little bit more messy. Sometimes I prefer not to write in the units so that it's cleaner when you look at it, but if you're not sure, units do come in handy to make sure that your calculation is correct, and that is how it's done.